today is Super Tuesday, and uh, this is the beginning of the rest of our life. This is the beginning of, does our country survive uh, the next four years? Do we make it to 2016? I'm going to go to Mark in Oklahoma because he is bringing up something that is so important, and most people don't even uh, recognize what's going on. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Glenn. Uh, I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry for about 14 years, and, you know, back when the Clinton administration came on board and, and Hillary had the health care plan, the pharmaceutical industry shrank about by about 90,000 employees, but it was mostly marketing and salespeople. But in 2008, when when the Obama administration came on, from 2000, December of 2008 to today, if you look at it, the pharmaceutical industry has lost 200 and 50,000 jobs, and it's the first time in the industry that they have laid off MD, PhD, scientific researchers. Companies have gotten completely out of research and development, completely out of manufacturing, and one of the reasons you you had said yesterday that, you know, why are there so many drug shortages right now, and it's, it's over-regulation in the industry, and what's happening is the pharmaceutical companies, in defense of that, to... to um, to stay afloat, they close their facilities. You know, in the old days, Pfizer would have a plant, they'd make one drug or, you know, Johnson & Johnson in that plant. But now they use contract facilities or generic plants. And recently we had a plant in Ohio that made 120 different drugs for around 37 different companies. Well, when the FDA regulates those facilities, you know, they'll shut down that plant if something's not right. Well, they shut this plant down for, you know, for some reason around the line or, you know, main, uh, you know, employees on the line. Well, they were only making one drug that day because they alternate days or months that they make different drugs. And then what happened was the FDA came in and said, oh, this is all wrong. They closed down the entire plant. And, and it's been closed since November 11th. And it's closed for the rest of the year. Well, you can't, it's not like you're making widgets. You can't just pick up and say, all right, let's move it over to this plant and make these drugs. You can't do that. The FDA has to approve where you're going to move it. Then they have to come in and, and you know, go through the facility. So this and goes to, get- this goes to could we, uh, thank you, uh, Sarah. This goes to why we're having such shortages. And most people don't even know this. But you, you ask your doctor. Your doctor now cannot write a prescription for certain drugs because they're just not available. In my lifetime, has it, you remember this ever? No. Okay. In my lifetime, I've never seen shortages of drugs in the United States of America, which goes right to exactly what the Obama administration said. They'll be able to do everything if they can just have shortages, if they can just have emergencies. Right. This and is a know- planned. This is a planned shortage. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked about kind of the nudge principle. Um, I don't know if you remember back when they were trying to pass the health care bill. Um, they were trying to pass the health care bill. We had this major scare of swine flu. All of a sudden, swine flu came out of nowhere, and they're like, it's going to kill us. It's an epidemic. Well, we 35,000 to 45,000 people die every year to the regular flu. We had less than 11 deaths to swine flu. Right. I'll give you another point on that. Back in, that, in December, or it was around October of 2000, uh, 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 two, I think it was 2009, 2010, you had five antibiotics go to the FDA or for approval. These five antibiotics had over, each drug had over 15 years of research and development research. Mm. Some of them came from classes of antibiotics that were 30 and 40 years old. They were safe. The FDA only approved one of those five antibiotics. The rest they denied. In that same timeline, you had no research and development, zero, on a vaccine for swine flu. But it fit the profile of the political agenda for the, for the government. So what you saw was you saw companies or right. the, the government – in six months, do a short, small little study on a swine flu vaccine. In less than six months, they had it approved and on the market to put in patients. And you had antibiotics that had sat there with 15 to 20 years research and didn't get approved. 
but a swine flu vaccine gets approved in less than six months. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird road you're going down here because I think I, I totally agree with your FDA being fish inefficient, and a lot of times it does hurt. I mean, with with new uh, with new medicines and new treatments, it, it does hurt the process quite a bit. Other countries get these drugs long before us. I mean, it's it really is a negative. However, I mean, I, I don't think. I mean, I, I don't know what the – it seems to me that you have to still take these things seriously. I mean, the swine flu, yes, it didn't wind up killing a lot of people, but a lot of times they don't know, and they have to be prepared for these things. Large, contagious diseases are something that the, that uh, we have to take seriously. That's, I mean, it's 25 to 35,000 people for a normal flu. Well, that makes even a better argument for if the flu is going to be worse. Yeah, but he's saying it is, but it's politically expedient yes, to I, do that. Uh, and so you have these great drugs that, for instance – um, oh, yeah. We're going. We're trying to get into human testing now. This incredible, incredible device from MD Anderson that will kill all cancer. And I don't mean like breast cancer and prostate. I mean all cancer, all cancer. It's happening now. Is that um, the nanotechnology thing? Yeah, and it's happening in. Uh, they've already done it in animal experiments. All they have to do is get it to uh, human testing. What human who has cancer would not be willing? Well, I know a lot they of people who are dying thing. with cancer it, right now that, that would absolutely do it. There's no RFP. after effects. None. Zero. Well, even if there are, if if you're dying already, why not? Right. Why wouldn't you try? And, the, and they won't allow you to do and that. And they won't let you. They don't let these why? experiments. It doesn't, even, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. If you're terminal and you've tried everything and nothing's working, why not? Why not? It's your I, choice. I would. Again, I, I love it. this. It's your body, your choice when it comes to whenever they want to talk about yep. your uterus. But when it comes yep. to, you know, you want to treat your own cancer. No, that, you, you can't. Just can't Sorry. do that. Mark, thanks a lot for your phone call. It is, hmm. look, uh, this is why tonight on GBTV, we start with the choices. We have the choice. Now, what is our choice going to be? Is it going to be continued down this path? This path is suicidal, and everybody knows it. 